Hello everyone, it's Chumi here. We're going to build today a lagoon crater and I'm going to give you the three main steps to make them look like the one you see in this video. You may have seen some of the builds this one resembles to on other YouTube channels, but this one is my own take on it. This build is actually a part of a bigger project of mine, the Flower Park, which is the other video you can check out on my channel. If you like watching what I'm doing and showing to you, don't forget to boop the like button below. So, what I'm going to show here is how I build the Lagoon Crater. The first thing for building this feature in your parks is using elevations brushes. The one thing I want to emphasize is that you need to first plan out where you want the lagoon to be on an elevated position. After you have it, what you want to do is to elevate the ground first and then flatten the surface until there is enough space to place a lagoon. And what comes next is you basically set it up as you want. You can create one viewing gallery or multiple ones. Put feeders and decorations, but remember, that all the added structures will cut angles into your circle-shaped lagoon. The second step is using the elevation tool again for making the lagoon appear even higher. This is an optional step, you may have seen it already in the video. And you may already be happy with the elevation as it is after step one. However, in my own take, I wanted my crater to look even higher, and I wanted to create a habitat for dinosaurs around the crater. So what I did is I actually lowered the surface around the crater and created this kind of hill with a sort of valley around it. I also experienced, by the way, that giving the high ground allows guests to see more of the habitat and more of the dinosaurs. So overall, I think it's usually good to lower the ground where you place the habitat and place paths overall above the habitat so that people who watch in viewing galleries can see more of the dinosaurs. The third step, as you see, is painting with brushes and objects to create a nice vegetation and area. Once you're done with the terraforming, you can just start using your brushes and create a sort of natural looking surface by using all the different surface brushes. Remember not to overuse them, but rather place them randomly to the places you think they make sense. I like, for example, the use of the dirt brush around water surfaces, because I want it to look like a place where dinosaurs went down to drink and they walked on the ground so much that it has no grass growing anymore, but only mud and dirt. On the other hand, in my opinion, as you see, rock formations make always sense to be used more than the other objects in a habitat. Don't be frugal with rocks, guys. They create the sense of more natural looking habitats. And I think if you position rocks in very random positions, you can pull it off with having a natural feel for the slopes of your crater, for example, rather than leaving the slope as it is. And even if the surface is, let's say flat, you can still make more natural looking environment that is given to your dinosaurs and to your guests to view the dinosaurs with putting down rocks than as if there were no rocks at all. Rocks create a nicer look overall, and I think they create a nicer look for the lakes as well. If you put some rocks next to a lake and even put inside the lake, they make it look just a bit more natural. So all I want is to achieve a nice view, a natural view for my habitat here. Using tree brushes is also something that you want to consider based on the biome you want to build. I think if the more tropical uh, your park 
is or the environment you want it to be, the more lush and the more loose you can be and you can actually like do a lot of lot of forests in your habitats. But the more it becomes like temperate or even desert or taiga climates, think about doing the same technique that I use for other brushes, not rocks, but with others. Put random spots, put the trees into random spots and you will have nice results. If we were doing a park tour, which we are going to do, my goal is here with all my habitats, it's to create a sense of living nature and no artificial takes on this. It's fun because we are doing the terraforming, brushing and whatnot, but we also need to keep the principle in mind to think about asymmetry, not about symmetry. Thinking about the colors make the balance with the imbalance. I am sure that it sounds a bit awkward, but you get the point. When you go out into the nature, you find asymmetry, you find asymmetric things more beautiful than symmetric ones. And with the crater, to be honest, well, it's pretty much a sy symmetric shape. There is not a lot of symmetry within the shape itself. But to make it natural, you want to create as much asymmetry around it with the decorations as possible. So once we are done with the exhibit, you just create basically the pathway to connect the lagoon crater to your park. You can decorate your pathways with all the decorations at your disposal. So you also make the artificial places look like they are done with design and care in mind. I hope this video has been fun to watch and added the tips for you to create this nice feature in your own parks too. If you liked it, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Check out the channel for more content around builds or watch the upcoming moments of the result and then join me in the tour video. See you next time.